Hi, you're watching the first episode of Proto.io Essentials, a series of videos covering core features of Proto.io. Watching all three videos in the series will help you quickly build up your prototyping skills so that you can start creating your own prototypes in no time. Throughout our video tutorials, we use a retail app prototype called Comfy. This was created specifically to showcase the most popular interaction design patterns commonly used in apps today and how they can be recreated in Proto.io. In this first episode of Proto.io Essentials, we'll be recreating the products and product details screens of our sample prototype, and we'll link them together. With Proto.io, you're free to choose the level of visual fidelity you're most comfortable with, and to demonstrate this, we'll first create the two screens as wireframes. We'll add images, fonts, and styling later. So, let's get started. To create a prototype, log into your Proto.io account. In your dashboard, you can access useful tutorials, example projects, as well as the Comfy project, which you can preview and open in the Proto.io editor. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll start creating a new project. Give your prototype a name. Choose your project type. Pick your preferred device skin and screen size. And click Create. This will bring you to the editor. In the center, you'll see your canvas. On the right-hand side, you can access Proto.io's UI libraries. Here, you'll find a library of basic UI components, which also includes a library of thousands of fully searchable icons. Proto.io also contains popular device UI libraries, such as iOS, Material Design, Windows, and WatchOS, as well as an OS-agnostic generic library ideal for web prototyping. All of Proto.io's components are fully customizable. Alternatively, you can use one of the templates found on the third tab, these are ready-made screens and blocks of content and UI components that you can mix and match to get a head start in building your prototype. You can save any of your edited components for future use in your Custom Components library. In this example, we'll be creating a new prototype using individual components. Let's start by creating the wireframe version of the product screen from our Comfy project. To start building our prototype, we'll drag some UI components onto the canvas. First, we'll bring in an iPhone status bar. You'll notice that whenever you add a new UI item to your canvas or an item is selected, the Properties Inspector appears. You can use the Inspector to adjust common properties applicable to all components, such as size and position, as well as other attributes specific to individual types of components. We'll also add a Home Indicator at the bottom of our screen. Next, we'll bring in a text box to act as the general title for the products screen of our prototype, either by pressing T on our keyboard or by dragging a text component from the basic library. As you can see, the inspector now contains properties specific to the text box, such as font type, size, and styling. To center the text box or any other UI component, you can use the alignment tools conveniently located above the canvas. When you bring in an image placeholder, you'll notice its aspect ratio is locked. In order to resize the placeholder lengthwise, you'll have to unlock it. We'll need another text box for the title of this section. In this case, New Arrivals. You can easily adjust the font size and other attributes using the inspector. The next step is to create a list of displayed products. First, we'll add a rectangle either by dragging it from the basic UI library or by pressing R and dragging with our mouse. We'll finalize our design by using a combination of image placeholders and text components and customize each to fit our prototype's needs. Finally, let's add a row of five stars for the product rating. We'll start by adding one single star from the basic components library and duplicate it so we get all the stars we need. Once we have all the stars ready, we can use the alignment tools to tidy everything up. We want the stars to indicate a rating of 4 out of 5. To do this, we'll style the first four stars together so that they are different from the fifth. To keep our screen organized and easier to manage, let's quickly group the stars together, naming the group Rating Stars. Let's also group all of the elements that comprise the whole product listing and name it Comfy Sofa. To complete our list of products, we can duplicate this group as many times as needed. We can edit each listing individually by double-clicking on each item. We can repeat the same process with each item we want to change to finalize our products screen. 
As a final touch, we'll need to add a hamburger menu icon at the top of our screen. To easily find the icon we need, let's use Proto.io's global search modal by pressing Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC. In the modal that appears, we can type the word menu and then click on icons to get results only from the icon libraries. Let's double click to bring the hamburger menu icon into our screen. We can scale and position it in the right place to match our prototyping needs. Let's rename screen one to products by clicking on it and changing its title in the right panel. We're now ready to start building our second screen. To create the second screen of our prototype, let's pick Add New Screen from the Screen menu and name our new screen Product Details. We'll create this screen by dragging and dropping items from the libraries on the right, just like we did earlier. Let's now change our prototype so that when the user taps on a product in the product screen, they will be taken to the Product Details screen. The fastest and easiest way to do this is by using the Interaction Wizard. Simply drag a connector from the Comfy Sofa group on the product screen to the product detail screen and a smart, fully configurable interaction is automatically created for you. As the default screen transition is set to No Transition, a good idea to make our prototype more realistic is to pick Slide Left from the list of available transitions. We now need to add another interaction to take us from the product detail screen back to the product screen. Same as earlier, we'll change the default transition. This time, we need to pick the slide right transition. This will ensure users know they're being taken back to the previous screen. Although Proto.io automatically saves your work at regular intervals, you can also save using the Save button or by using keyboard shortcuts, Command S on a Mac, and Control S on a PC. Next, let's click Preview to view our prototype in the player and check the interactions we created earlier. As you can see, everything works just as we intended. Tapping on the Comfy Sofa group on the Product screen takes us to the Product Details screen, whereas tapping on the back arrow on the Product Details screen takes us back to the Product screen. When working with Proto.io, we suggest you download and install the Proto.io app available for iOS and Android. The app features full support for all native touch gestures and will give you the most realistic feel of the app prototype you're working on. Upon installation of the app, simply use your Proto.io login and password to sign in. Under Account Projects, you'll find all the projects you have access to. Let's tap on the Comfy project to interact with our prototype on our iPhone as if it was a real app. Now, let's go back to our prototype and add some visual fidelity elements, such as images and color. Adding images to your project is easy. You just drag the images from your desktop onto the canvas, resize them, and place them where you want. Note how the image we dragged in became available in the Asset Manager panel on the right-hand side. You can also upload multiple images there to later drag individually onto your canvas. To replace an existing image or an image placeholder, double-click on it. This opens the full Asset Manager modal containing a pre-populated library of images to choose from, account assets available throughout all your projects, as well as assets exclusive to the particular project you are working on. Let's click on Project Assets and select the image we want. If you want to change font styles, Proto.io allows you to pick from a list of popular standard fonts. For even more options, you can always use the Font Manager by clicking on Manage Project Fonts. There, you can search through hundreds of fonts, including Google and Adobe fonts, to find the one you want and add it to your font list. Then simply use the inspector to put the final touches to your text components. Next, we'll change the color of our rating stars. Finally, we'll follow the same process to add visual fidelity to the product detail screen. Voila! Now we have a fully functional interactive prototype that also looks great. Alternatively, you can create your wireframes or high fidelity designs in your favorite design tool. Using our plugins, you can import your artboards as Proto.io screens. All your assets are sliced, imported, and placed in their original positions. Your group and layer hierarchy will be preserved just like you originally set them up in your design tool of choice. Using the Proto.io plugins, allows you to take your designs to the next level with Proto.io's interactive components, gestures, and advanced animations.
The final step after creating a prototype is to get feedback by sharing it with your team, users, or friends and family. To share a prototype, click the Share button on the right-hand side of the top bar and click Share Project. Featuring one-click sharing, Proto.io automatically provides you with a public link for your prototype that can be viewed in the browser or using the Proto.io app. For more in-depth sharing features, click on the Settings button. Here, you have access to other useful share-related options, such as sharing with a specific team of reviewers, password protecting your link, as well as embedding and various user testing options. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching this first episode of Proto.io Essentials. We strongly encourage you to spend a few minutes to experiment with the skills you've learned today. Make sure you don't miss Part 2 and 3 of the Essentials series to complete your knowledge. In the next episode, you'll find out more about Creating reusable items. Creating scrollable areas, such as vertically scrolling and horizontally scrolling carousels. And adding interactions beyond tap and go to screen.